Latest from reporter Govan Whittles, who's been covering the hearings for us. Govan, the ARB is supposed to step in when, uh, you know, racist adverts emerge. What are they saying about their powers? Well, they've admitted that the, they are curtailed when it comes to issuing sanctions. And yesterday, they were accused of being toothless and unable to rein in marketers, agencies who are found to discriminate or be racist. And today, we got some of the stats of the ARB's operations. So last year, they got 630 complaints. Of those 630 complaints, only 30 of them uh, related to discrimination and racism. Um, and uh, Sorry, only three of them related to discrimination and racism. And of that, only one of them was taken up for investigation, um, and that issue related to discrimination and not necessarily racism. Despite that, the CEO of the ARB says that racism does remain a problem in the advertising industry, something that lurks in communication. And she described uh, it using the phrase unconscious bias, uh, saying that people may hold existing prejudices which they don't confront when formulating content for adverts, um, and they try to address this through sense sensitivity training. Interestingly, though, after the Clicks Tresemme advert, the ARB offered uh, training and sensitivity towards racism uh, to its members, but of all its members, only one of them took up that training. Let's listen to what the CEO had to say about racism in the advertising industry and how they view it. All these unconscious biases and tone deafness is that that failure, it's taking that failure to question to another level of not questioning what your words mean, not questioning how do your words fall on your audience. When you say a white woman's hair is normal hair, how does that land on your majority black South African audience? Because you are deaf to the tone of what you are saying. And those are all things that we need to be conscious of, we need to be working on, we need to be fighting we need to be training against. I think it is a given in this room. Racism is not simple. Racism is complex. Racism is deep. Racism is something we have to be fighting on many different levels. And I think that's what I was trying to encapsulate in talking about unconscious bias, in talking about tone deafness, and in talking about racism. And please let nothing I've said communicate that I do not think racism is a problem. I think it's a problem in advertising. I do not think it's the problem that is the, the top of mind for the people who are complaining to us. They're worried about the price of those chickens. But that doesn't mean it's not one of the things that has to be dealt with if we're going to move forward as a country. Same goes for gender bias. Same, you know, all of, all of these issues where we're not interrogating ourselves are problems. So, Govan, the ARB is seemingly saying that it doesn't have as much power um, as we thought in terms of punishing or not really punishing because they think that they don't want to punish them, but at least affecting change in terms of racist ads that emerge. Essentially what happens is that they basically speak to the, their members about the adverts that they've put up and try to correct them by helping them, um, first in removing the ad, um, but then also offering the training. And what they've said is that they'd like to remain an entity which self-regulates, i.e. gets regulated through its members, uh, its board of appeals, but they have said that co-regulation may work. And in this regard, that would entail having the courts either enforce um, their corrective measures on their members, although this was questioned by some of the evidence leaders and panelists here, um, but they did seem intent on keeping self-regulation. And they believe that this works because of uh, the manner in which it's operated over the years. Um, they admit that if they were able to issue fines, they would be able to raise their money in that way. But the um, fact that the membership to the ARB remains voluntary would always give a member an opportunity to opt out and then uh, escape the sanction. So it is a quagmire, but let's listen to what the CEO had to say about the sanctions, how it works, and how they would want it to work. You know, I think there's this idea that we should be imposing massive fines, and it would, it would be lively for us if we could impose massive fines, because then we wouldn't need a funding system. We'd have massive fines as our funding system. But we're not about punishment. We're about protecting the consumer. So when the problem is that the 
the advertiser is not understanding the rules properly, then the correct remedy is to help them understand the rules properly, not to punish them, but to help them learn so that the consumer is protected. So, so we have a lot of breach decisions where, you know, in this world of digital online, when you remove an ad, it's quite hard. Um, so we have a lot of breach decisions where the one company has complained against the other company and there's been a decision and then they find that if you click on this YouTube channel and go down this rabbit hole and you find it, you'll eventually find the ad. And the other company will come back and say, I'm sorry, we didn't realize we've removed it now. That's not something we're going to issue a harsh sanction for because that is a genuine error that in the, in the nature of online advertising, you can't pick it all up. So we would look at the nature of that breach. If they went out and took a full-page ad in the newspaper in breach of our decision, that would be the sort of thing where we'd have to look at sanctions. The sanctions involve that preclearance. It also involves an adverse publicity statement if they continue not to listen to us, where they have to pay for a adverse publicity statement that we draft and that we place in the media according to whatever the, because this will normally be done by one of the appeal committees, whatever the appeal committee says it must be. Um, if they don't pay for that, then we can issue, again I remind you to members, a blanket ad alert that says that the media will not accept any of their advertising. All right, Gobin Whittles, let's leave it there for now.